If our viewers already possess the knowledge presented in this episode, it would have probably saved them much money. This cable costs $25 per meter, and this one costs over a thousand. Can this price translate into image quality? And if so, what is it that we can gain? Let's be clear from the outset. Any working HDMI cable will show the same colors, sharpness and smoothness of the image within its specification regardless of the price. There is just one big but. Not all cables work with the full HDMI 2.1 specification, so it's not like you can buy any cheapest cable if you want everything to work. Does it sound a little confusing? Rest assured, I will explain everything in a moment. In today's episode, we will scientifically prove that these two cables with extremely different prices offer exactly the same image quality and capabilities, and I will also tell you what to look for when choosing an HDMI cable. If, on the other hand, dear viewer, you came here just to find out what to buy, you will find links to the tested used by us and above all inexpensive HDMI cables in the description. You can confidently place your order and everything work in top quality. However, if you want to acquire more knowledge and see the results of our experiments, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel and watch the episode until the end. Let's get started! Before we get to the experiments, let's talk about the types of HDMI cables. At the beginning of the episode, I made a thesis that each cable will provide the same picture within its specification. But it is often difficult to figure out what we are about to buy when browsing the offers. Meaningless marketing slogans such as cable for 4K, cable for 8K, cable for HDR and so on are common, which doesn't provide much hope. The truth is that it tells us nothing. Moreover, manufacturers tend to misleadingly describe cables with a designation of the input standard, for example, HDMI 1.4, 2.0 or 2.1. Depending on this, wouldn't be wise. For example, if we bought a cable that was labeled as 1.4 on its box, but we already have HDMI 2.1 ports on our TV, it does not mean that it won't work together properly. Why is that? Well, because from the cable's perspective, nothing else than the amount of data that flows through it matters. The amount is determined by technical parameters such as resolution, refresh rate and color something. The parameters that are maximally possible have changed over the years, as you can now see in the table. The first HDMI ports found in TVs 20 years ago allowed for almost full HD, while today we can freely transmit 8K. Importantly, the correct designation of the cable is not the connector version, but the class assigned to a specific standard, which can be found on the official website hdmi.org. And here's the bad news, even if there is a clear description of the class on the cable from the manufacturer, or at least the standard for which it is intended, there is no guarantee that such a cable will work properly. There is plenty of posts on the forums where users complain that they were unable to get a stable image, even though they bought products marked by the manufacturer as compatible. This occurs most often in case of longer cables, especially those over 3 meters. The situation improved recently when the HDMI organization introduced the official HDMI Premium Certified Program. Due to that, we can find cables with a hologram and a QR code that can be scanned to confirm reliability. Choosing such a cable guarantees its correct operation regardless of the price and the manufacturer as it had to pass rigorous tests before it hit the market. It is worth noting that there are currently two types of holograms. The first one, which looks like the one you see on the screen now, guarantees correct operation within the maximal capabilities of HDMI 2.0, so in short, 4K 60Hz resolution. It is sufficient for DVD or Blu-ray players, as well as 4K TV set-top boxes or the vast majority of network players, for example, Apple TV. The second hologram with a green ultra-high speed mark guarantees full compatibility with the HDMI 2.1 specification, that is, 8K and 4K resolution up to 144Hz. This specification is especially useful for owners of the latest consoles or PCs that can generate images with such high parameters. PlayStation. The presence of this hologram guarantees that the cable is a good buy, but its absence absolutely does not mean that the cable is bad or that it will not work. Many excellent cables do not participate in this official certification program. Suffice it to say that the absurdly expensive WireWord Starlight has no HDMI forum hologram anywhere on the box or inside, even though its packaging is probably worth more than some of the certified cables. Neither does the PureLink PS3010 recommended by us have it, 
but we have tested it many times. Now, let's quit talking about the theory and move on to what I'm sure many people are waiting for, an empirical experiment. We will compare the image quality on two different cables, one of them worth 20 and the other over $1,000. We are changing a scenery to our current test lab, where we will examine whether the signal sent over a cheaper cable has inferior sharpness, colors or motion reproduction than the signal going over a more expensive cable. The first thing we should remember is that HDMI is a digital connector. This means that the electrical impulses running through the cable are interpreted as zeros and ones. According to the theory, interfering the impulses up to a certain point causes no problem, as the signal is deciphered correctly by the receiving device, that is the TV, monitor or projector. At some point, however, a strong interference can make it impossible to distinguish the state of zero or one. What will happen then? Let's check. In this experiment, we will intentionally cut the cable. As you can see, there are many so-called shielding layers inside, which protect against interference. The cables differ when it comes to these elements. The more expensive ones usually have better isolation. They may also have thicker conductors made of pure copper. But what if we disassemble this properly working cable and remove the shielding layers to intentionally cause errors? As you can see, at some point we will be able to observe a very characteristic phenomenon on the screen. There are many terms to describe it. Grain, sparkle, everyone probably knows what we are talking about. At this point, the TV is no longer able to decipher zeros and ones correctly. There is a degradation of the image, but at no point does it involve a deterioration of color, brightness or sharpness. There is also a second possibility. When we connect a device that uses HDCP protection, for example, a Blu-ray player, or Apple TV, then the image will simply disappear because the device will not be able to decrypt it. However, quality in the classic sense will never degrade. Such things could happen in analog connectors such as composite, component or SCART where voltage levels were directly translated into image brightness, not deciphered as zeros and ones. If this explanation is insufficient, then let's move on to the experiment. Here is the Acopel signal analyzer, which is able to read what flows through the HDMI cable at the level of specific image pixel values. We will now put a dynamic image on the TV and apply a focus pattern on the center. In general, good sharpness means high contrast between adjacent pixels, so we will use something extreme, a pattern in which there is a jump from black to white from one pixel to another. So we will use something extreme, a pattern in which there is a jump from black to white from one pixel to another. If the cable could affect sharpness, then this edge would be blurred, or the black or white would deteriorate. So here we go with the test. Let's begin with the cable for over a thousand of dollars. We can see that the image looks good, and the cursors of our analyzing device show that there is pure white on this pixel and perfect black on the adjacent one. In other words, it is a 100% sharp edge. We now switch to a cable worth $20, and what happens? Well, as you can see, the edge is just as sharp, the black is just as deep, and the white is just as bright. It probably sounds cut and dried for people who know a few things about electronics. Nevertheless, I think that it's better to provide convincing evidence when talking about cables. Finally, we shall empirically check the question asked by many people. Can a longer or inferior cable increase signal delay, for example, when playing on a console? So in theory, the current, or more precisely, the electric field in the cable propagates at a speed close to the speed of light. So the differences associated with this could be measured in a laboratory, but these values are completely irrelevant to any living organism. The perceptible delay is for example 50 milliseconds or 50 thousandths of a second. In contrast, only 3 billionths of a second will be required to travel one additional meter to the cable. This is a colossal difference and as you can easily calculate, even 100 kilometers of the cable would have no impact. But what if we had a fiber optic cable with an active plug? Let's check. As you can see, the signal delay in the TV is 12 milliseconds when connected with a short ultra expensive cable. After changing it to a 10 meter fiber optic cable, which is much cheaper, there is no difference. Similarly, we will experience no differences in the available functions on a game console and so on. As I said earlier, the cable is only to provide adequate bandwidth for the signal and the supportive function is already a matter of devices on both sides. So as the experiments show, three scenarios are possible with HDMI cables. Either it works perfectly or it doesn't work at all, and there is no picture, or it works and doesn't work a little at the same time, which causes the artifacts, the picture sparks, 
there are crackles in the sound or the picture disappears from time to time. However, there is no scenario in which we have degraded or improved image quality in terms of color sharpness, contrast or brightness. The greatest challenge to get a stable connection awaits users looking for longer cables. Cables up to 3 meters are less prone to transmission errors than longer ones. Even the older or cheaper ones without certificates can usually handle the full HDMI 2.1 specification. If we need a longer cable where everything works well, then it is best to look for a fiber optic HDMI cable. There is little chance of finding a certified copper cable and I won't guarantee the quality of any cable longer than 300 cm that is available on the market. Fiber optic cables, on the other hand, have a modulator built into the plug that turns electrical impulses into light and these can travel up several tens of meters without trouble. If you are looking for a tested fiber optic cable, there is a link in the description as well. Of course, you can also look for a cheaper alternative. Anything having this official certification will do, even if it is suspiciously cheap. At least that's what we were told by the members of the HDMI forum when we had a chance to have a word with them at CES in Las Vegas. However, the model recommended by us in the description has been chosen because it's solidly made. In particular, it has well-located plugs which minimizes the risk of breaking inside the socket. It is especially important in case of longer cables, as they are often located inside the wall or other rigid enclosures and replacing them is very hard, if not impossible. Here is another suggestion. If you are currently at the stage of finishing your interior, at the same time of watching this video, I would also suggest making grommets in the wall, which allow for future replacements. They may be necessary when the standard develops further and the current cable specification becomes insufficient. This is by far the safest solution, but if we do not want to spend this much, it is worth at least laying a top-grade SFTP twisted pair, which will allow for transmitting HDMI video with special modulators if necessary. So this is the truth about HDMI cables. It is not that difficult to understand, but it's not so easy to get to it due to plenty of advertisements and articles spreading misinformation. <laughs> Let's recall it all in a nutshell. Cables working with the same signal always give identical colors, sharpness or brightness regardless of their price. The capabilities of a cable are defined by one of the classes that is extensively described on the official website hdmi.org. The following classes are currently binding. HDMI Premium Certified for up to 4K 60Hz resolution and HDMI Ultra Certified for 8K and 4K 144Hz resolution. If we need assurance that the cable will perform well, then it is best to choose the cables having such holograms on the packaging or those from the description of the video. On the other hand, if we have older cables, it's still possible that they will work. It is worth checking. But there is a possibility that we will experience picture fades or crackling of the phonics, or the sound will not get back from the TV to the external speakers. Then it means it's time for replacement. And now it's time to subscribe to our channel and visit www.choose.tv because there's a lot going on there. See you next time.